design and characterize new CRISPR technologies. What we use these technologies for is to make that leap to in vivo. In particular, we have proteins like uh, Cas14 and Cas4, they have all these different names with the word Cas in front of it. They enable us to actually go into the body and to do things like have ultra compact systems. The original Cas9 technology here at the bottom, uh, it's actually quite large. So you can think of it as kind of a, a semi-trailer. You're trying to drive a semi-trailer down city streets, which is very difficult. These ultra compact systems up here on the top um, in green are just way smaller. So they're like a third or less the size. So you can think of it as kind of a smart car version of the CRISPR technology. We can fit it inside the typical delivery vehicles that we use uh, to deliver the CRISPR technology to cells like the brain, or the heart, or the muscle. Mm -hmm. The most common of these is this thing called AAV, and the, or adeno-associated virus. Like many things in biology, this is something that actually yes. comes from nature. Viruses are very good at locking onto a cell and inserting genetic material. Normally that's a bad thing, but we can again co-opt nature, say now instead of using uh, this virus to insert genetic material that would be harmful to our cells, what if we co-opt these viruses to insert the CRISPR technology into the cells that need this permanent cure for a genetic disease? The unfortunate reality of this AAV delivery technique is that it has a very strict size limit, so it can only fit so much. The original Cas9 technologies don't even fit in these uh, delivery vehicles at all. They just can't deliver the payload. So these really tiny versions of CRISPR actually fit into these payloads with lots of room to spare. Like any good uh, scientist, you can use this payload very creatively. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. One is you can make the technology more safe. You can say, I want to put an additional payload that means I really only have the CRISPR technology active in brain cells and nowhere else. Because these can, things can be a bit uh, sloppy. They can sometimes go to the wrong cells. You try and keep them on target as much as possible. But you can have an additional kind of safety check that says only express the CRISPR system in these particular cells and no other cells. One of the things we're looking at is how do you expand the type of edit that can be done? Uh, the original Cas9 CRISPR systems really could only delete a sentence. That's the only thing they could do. A lot of diseases, that's perfectly fine. All you need to do is delete a gene and you potentially cure the disease. For many diseases, it's much more subtle. Maybe you need to turn up the volume on a gene or even turn down the volume of gene. That would be what we call epigenetic editing. So instead of changing the DNA, what if we just put marks on top of the DNA, keeping it exactly the same? They'd say, express this gene more, I want more of it. Or maybe express this gene less, I want less of it. Or maybe we need to write in an entirely new copy of the gene. Maybe this gene is really critical, we can't survive without it, but the current version of it is something that uh, is harming us. That's gene writing. So what if we actually need to insert a whole paragraph into that? Or what if we just need to change a single base pair? So you can think of this as spell check. What if we don't want to delete anything? Everything's perfectly fine. Out of those 3 billion base pairs, there's just a single letter that's actually causing the disease. Well, then we can go in and actually change that with base editing. And all of these techniques are things where you take the CRISPR system and you fuse on some sort of additional function, base editing, gene writing, epigenetic editing. We go back to uh, the previous slide, then what we can see is that we have all this room to put that additional technology in. And these are what we call CRISPR+. Plus. So CRISPR is now this search engine that's going through all those 3 billion base pairs.